So, so notoriously, summers have been slower for gold in terms of price action, and and you might be seeing a little bit of that. I think you still have to keep in mind that the Federal Reserve and their influence on the dollar is probably still going to be one of the major major driving points for gold. So, you know, for instance, we have a Federal Reserve meeting coming up next week. That could be a trigger for some sort of move in gold. If we take a look at the GLD chart, which is the gold ETF, and I want to show that here. Um, the biggest thing that stands out to me on this chart is that you still have a bullish consolidation pattern. So if we zoom out on this chart a little bit here, you can see you've had this big move to the upside and then this choppy consolidation. And that, again, is bullish consolidation, which speaks towards upside. You also have an inverse head and shoulders, which is a bearish pattern formation, shoulder, head and shoulder. And what I'm looking for here is when do we break this trend line? Because once you break this trend line, gold should kind of get a supercharged move to it. So I think as long as you remain below this line, it could be choppy in the near term, which may explain that kind of summer into fall period. Um, but once we get above this trend line, maybe towards the end of the year, you could see a pretty dramatic move up in the yellow metal. And I think, again, I still have a price target potentially on gold for year end at 2100 an ounce. Yeah, I was going to check in with you on that as well and see if that still holds true for you. It sounds like yes. Yes, I would say as long as, again, I'm expecting over the next month to break that key trend line. Uh, assuming we do that over the next month, then I do think year end. Otherwise, it could get pushed into the first quarter of 2022. All right. And let's talk about that upcoming Fed meeting as well. That's, of course, very important for people to be keeping an eye on. What are you expecting to see there? So, so the biggest thing is going to be all about this tapering, right? I mean, every time we get some inflation data, some economic news, the markets are always jockeying now to, to decide, you know, can the Fed be more dovish? Do they have to taper right away? Can they push tapering out a little bit? And, you know, we saw the CPI number uh, come in a little bit less than expected, meaning it was lower inflation. And again, the market's just loving that potential for tapering to get pushed off. And remember, the markets view the Federal Reserve and the money that's being printed as, you know, the Federal Reserve is the drug pusher, really. I mean, to use a, an analogy here. And, and the money that they just continue to infuse in this market is essentially the drug that the market wants. So any kind of potential pullback sends the market into kind of this withdrawal versus them continuing to supply the market with drugs, which is what the market wants, which allows for the markets to continue to go higher. So I'm in the camp that they're, they're actually going to be a little bit more hawkish than the, than the market expects. I don't know if it'll be enough to cause a, a bigger drop in the markets, but I do think you're starting to see weakness in the charts, and I do expect downside in the S&P and the NASDAQ. Right. And at least for me, I'm starting to feel this tension between, you know, of course, we pay close attention to what the Fed says it will do. But there's also growing doubts about whether it can actually do what it says it plans to do. So what are your thoughts there? You're 100% right. I mean, I, I have huge doubts. I believe the Fed has basically boxed themselves into a corner where they can't really taper too much. Now, I think they want to keep the, the perception that they have some control. So I believe that they will do a little bit. But we saw in 2018, as soon as they tried to raise rates, the markets dropped 20%. They had to reverse and actually start easing more. And then the same thing now, you know, this $120 billion they're printing that they're pushing in on a monthly basis, that was supposed to be an emergency thing during that March 2020 COVID period, just until we got through it. And, and here we are with the economy, you know, growing at 6% GDP, and they're still pumping it into the system. And, you know, any signs that they're going to stop, the market starts to freak out as well. My big fear is that the Fed loses total credibility. Um, and then you wonder if at that point, does the market just say, okay, the Fed has no clue, this is too risky. And then you could actually see a crash scenario in the market where big money just flees and, and runs to whether it's gold or whether it's cash or other, other assets. Yeah, and maybe I can take you over to a tweet I saw that you made earlier this month about the Fed. Basically, the idea that the Fed maybe won't even exist in 10 years, it'll end up being a scapegoat. Maybe we have a digital dollar, other changes like that. Can you go into those ideas? Because that's really interesting to me. Yeah, and you know, this is one of those things that keeps me up at night trying to think about how the Fed can maneuver and get out of the situation. And remember, the Fed in 1977 got the dual mandate. So prior to 77, it was all about keeping inflation in check. Then in 77, the government gave them, okay, you also have to pay attention to full employment and try to keep full employment. The problem with full employment is that you get in a scenario where 
the, the Fed doesn't want the market to come down at all ever because then that increases unemployment, which then makes them have to pump more money in the system to bring employment back back down or unemployment back down. And it's just this kind of merry-go-round where they can't really do the job that they need to do. They can't be the, the, the strict parent, essentially. They have to always be kind of giving the market whatever it wants because God forbid the market throws a tantrum and unemployment shoots to the upside, right? So, you know, this is a situation where I, I honestly don't know how we get out of it. Um, I think at some point you're going to see some sort of collapse from the ashes of that, where the dollar collapses, the, the debt of the U.S. collapses. I do believe that the people here in the U.S. will demand some sort of restriction, right? Because we see the government here in the U.S. just just printing money and spending so much debt here or running up debt. The Fed is just printing, printing, printing. And the average American, really, you're not seeing the benefits necessarily. Uh, for instance, a great example is the wealth gap. So one of the things, right, the Fed has said, especially over the last year, is they want to really help the wealth gap, you know, bring it together. And, and if you look at since the Fed started QE, has the wealth gap, the inequality gap gotten worse or better? And it's gotten way worse. The rich have gotten so much richer. The poor are still poor. And that's telling you that by the Fed pushing up the stock market, it's basically just enriching a certain group. And again, that's not going to be sustainable. Um, I do think eventually you're going to see a digitalized you know, uh, currency. I don't know if it'll be called the dollar or if it'll be something else, but I do think the Fed will be the scapegoat. Um, there's no other way to do it. You'll have to have a reset of debt and the currencies. And then you will see from that, again, restrictions on whatever the new currency is. It might be the digital dollar. They might call it. Who knows? But there'll be some sort of restriction where the Fed cannot just willy-nilly print it. And then the same thing with the government. There'll likely be restrictions so the, the debt cannot just be run up re relentlessly. Yeah, okay, I find that really helpful. And one of the reasons I wanted to ask you about what you see, you know, very far out into the future, 10 years ahead, is because I'm starting to hear more and more about, you know, this situation is unsustainable, but nobody really wants to talk too much about what that actually looks like. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's true, and especially the politicians, right? I mean, they're focused on getting reelected in a few years, so they just want to, you know, run up more debt because then the stimulus helps the economy, which makes them look better. I mean, we don't have the people in power, and especially like e even Jerome Powell as the Fed chair. The question is, you know, even if he wanted to play hardball, does he want to deal with that? I mean, do you want to be the Federal Reserve chairman when the next collapse happens? I don't think anyone wants to be, um, especially when it's going to be as big as it is. And remember, the Fed has been the catalyst for every big bubble that we've seen over the last 20 plus years, whether it was the dot coms, which when that collapsed, the Fed lowered interest rates, which then encouraged encouraged borrowing, which created the housing bubble, and then that collapsed, with, which then they came out and have now created this new asset bubble. So again, one of the things that most people don't understand is that it's actually very healthy for an economy to have ups and downs. When you let an economy be itself, it has expansion periods and contractions. The contractions are never that dramatic. Yeah, it's a little bit of a recession, and then you come out of it. When you, when you just pump a system so full that it can't have a recession, then you get the big collapses that are so painful for so many people. And it's, it's just, again, it's not a healthy situation. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think like what you're saying is, is just so true in regards to, you know, what comes of this? How do we, how do we handle it as, as, as even a population? I mean, it's so, so interesting and scary. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So thinking about this digital dollar idea, we have signs of that happening in China, would the U.S. be following some cues from over there? How would you see that playing out? Because because we do have this happening in some areas. Yeah, and, and this is where it gets even more interesting, right? Because you know you'd think that the U.S. would be leading the charge, but they're actually lagging. China's already introduced a digital yuan. Now, granted, it's not really a kind of a crypto because the the Chinese government can print it as much as they want. But the idea, I'm sure, in China is that they want it to replace the dollar as the reserve currency. And I think, honestly, this is all going to come to a head where the dollar starts losing that reserve currency status. C countries that are holding billions and trillions of dollars then say, OK, now we have to have digital yuan instead of dollars. They dump those dollars on the open market, and it perpetuates this collapse that I think will come. And, you know, again, it's hard to estimate when, but maybe 10 years from now or so. 
Um, but from that, again, is, is that's what's going to have to come from, from the ashes, essentially, is something new. Hopefully, the Fed starts to see the writing on the wall and acts. But I'm sure China, again, is saying, you know, we want to take over. Remember, whoever has the reserve currency really has the power. Right. The U.S. has been in a dominant role with the reserve currency. China wants to do that. China, everything China does is to kind of set themselves up in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And they're eyeing that digital reserve currency. Absolutely.